All right, guys, here we go. So um, there's new formulas, uh, some different formulas. Um, these look a little wacky. First, let me explain what's happening here. And the way these are derived are kind of confusing. So I'm not going to actually go down that path. Uh, maybe for a peak out BCRs class, I'd maybe do it. But even then, like, I still have to look that up because I don't remember how these are derived. But, but these are a good foundation for some of the other ideas we're going to play a lot. So if you have sine A plus B, so if you're adding two angles, A plus B, then that's the point that works. And guys, you guys get this. Don't worry. You will get this. You will get this point. Um, sine A minus B, same thing. But it's just a minus in the middle. So you can see when there's a plus here, there's a plus here, there's a minus here, there's a minus here. So you can consolidate these two into one. Use plus minus. So you see plus minus plus minus, right? This part is a little trickier with cosine. Cosine of a plus b has a minus in between. Cosine of a minus b is a plus in between. And it's also cosine, cosine, sine, sine. It's a little different than one for sine, right? So we see the plus or minus, but in those see the minus plus. That does matter. The top operator corresponds to the top operator, top operator here. The bottom operator corresponds to the bottom operator over here. So if I have cosine a minus b, then I better do cosine all this plus sign. And then tangent, uh, they have tangent plus. There's a plus here, there's a plus in the neighborhood minus in the denominator. Reverse when there's a minus here, minus and plus. So you see the plus minus, plus minus, but minus. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. And again, you, the ones in yellow are what I'll give to you guys because it consolidates the other two they come from. Okay. So here we go for these examples. And the notes are pretty reasonable. It shouldn't be too bad. And again, you guys can just use the rest of the time to work on homework. So, and I'll show what the homework is in just a little bit. So here's, you have to write this as a sine, cosine, or tan of a single angle. So let me let me rephrase that because that's actually not quite clear. Of a single angle. Clearly you got two angles. You got 80 and 20, right? So here's the deal. Didn't we have a form that looked like this, right? Didn't we just see that? Actually, that was a minus, my bad. We just saw that, right? So, how is up here? It is not. Okay, we'll leave that later. That's okay. That's okay. So, we saw this. What does this mean? This means this. Oh, actually, you know what? I was right in what I did earlier, guys. My apologies. I was right. Sorry about that. And, guys, can you stop talking in the back, please? Thank you. Thanks, Logan. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. All right. Um, sorry, I was right initially. When we have this. What's what does that equal? Cosine of a minus b. So you see how this is very identical to this, right? What would you identify as a and b in example one? What would angle a equal? What would angle b equal? Eighty and twenty. And we see that it's supposed to be the same thing as cosine of eighty minus twenty, which of course is cosine of sixty degrees. So that's how you can bring these two together as one angle, as a single angle. And then, of course, if you evaluate, it's one half. That's just unicircle stuff. Uh, did you guys get filled out unicircle, or do you have to make your own unicircle? You can make your own. Okay. So we, we could do the same thing. I'll give you a blank when you can fill it out. So Now, for example, two. Um, now, the quiz is just verifying, so you don't need a unicircle for that. Okay, example two, there's a minus in between, right? And there's a sine cosine, it's an alternation. So remember we saw this, sine A, cosine B, minus cosine A, sine B. That's the same thing as saying sine of A minus B. Same exact thing. What's your A and B here? 5 pi over 12 and 5 over 12. And if we subtract them, What do you get when you subtract them? Which reduces to what? 130, got it, good, excellent. Very nice, Tammy, thank you. Pi root three is roughly, not roughly, it is 60 degrees. That's root three root two. So again, what you need to do is you really got to look 
at your formula sheet. I'm just going to clear the screen for a sec. I'll, I'll bring this back. Don't worry, guys. If you're still, um, um, John and Sam. But you have to compare it to this step. You see how it's just, it looks just like this, right? Sine, this on this, this on that, but just like that. Identify A and B, which are 5 times 12. 5 and 12, and just do the subtraction of it. So if I redo my erasing, so there you go. Right, that's it. So sine 5 power 12, sine 5 over 3, you get root 3 over 2. Next up is this here. Uh, tangent. So it's the same thing as saying tangent of A minus B. So tangent of, sorry, tangent A minus tangent B over 1 plus tangent A tangent B. And what will that one correspond to? A minus B. So looks like it's subtraction each time. So you need a tangent of 5 pi over 18 minus pi over 9. Does that make sense? How I identify A and B, right? A is the, this one, and B is this one. A is that one, B is that one. Now, can I just make root pi over 9 to the little fraction? Good. Yes, find the LCD. Perfect. Find the LCD, which is. So I'm going to. Erase this and make it 2 pi over 18. Switch colors for a bit of contrast. Switch course is 3 pi over 18, which is 1 6. Looks good. And that should be 30 degrees. I think root 3 over 3, if not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Really, really. Not just unit circle, guys. Just unit circle stuff. Yep. Yeah, that's just units because on the unit circle, when you're at pi over six, that's like thirty degrees. Actually, I have a unit circle. I'll show you guys really quickly here. Uh, so when I taught altitude trig honors, it's been chapter 13. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I know everything. <laughs> uh, pi over six is right here. Let me clear. And it's why I'm doing an opposite of basement. You do one half of root three, two. The root three, two flips, you get one over root three. Which is fine. If you said one over root three, that's fine. But if you rationalize the denominator, you got multiply top and bottom by root three. That's where you get root three over three, that one. Um, okay, let's keep moving. Okay, some verifying and then some other evaluating stuff we have to do. Verifying what's happening here. I'm going to work on the left side. Um, I'm going to actually do it in each case. Left side here and left side here. Because I know an identity for cosine of A minus B. I know it's going to be this, right? Cosine A, well, again, use your formula sheet. You don't have to memorize it. Plus Now, this is part is may not be terribly obvious. But you want to do here. Break the fraction into two. So you want to break into two. If you do that, here's what you get. You're allowed to do this when the denominator is, um, there's no plus or minus in the denominator, right? It's all just one term, really. Cosine A times cosine B counts as one term. So you're allowed to do this. Because think about, what if I went back the other direction? Would I get back to the big fraction? Absolutely would. 100% you would. Right, so. You totally got that. You break the set. Like, for example, I had like 3 over 4 over 11. 
that makes sense, right? So why not go, why, you know, because you can go this way, why not go that way? Okay, you can go from these two to one, or you can go from one to two. Well, if, as long as one term in the bottom, like, there's no addition or subtraction on the bottom. <laughs> now, by doing this, what do you think happens to the first fraction? What does that become? One, yeah, because they'll cancel. And if you look at the second fraction, you have sine over cosine. What's sine over cosine? And then you have another angle that has the same thing with angle B, sine and cosine. And it's verified. But you have to break up the fractions. That has to be done. I'm not sure how else I would do it. And working the left side seems to be the most legit way to do it. If you want to work on the right side, just be it'd be tricky. You could try, but just be really tricky, I think. So same thing with the left side, because I have um, a difference. I have x minus pi over 4. So I'm going to keep the right side as is. The left side I'm going to do is cosine x times sine, sorry, times cosine, because it's it's a it's a cosine difference angle, oh, sorry, difference formula, cosine pi over 4 plus, remember it's plus when there's a minus in the cosine, sine x, sine pi over 4. What's cosine pi over 4? In a circle. In case you guys forgot. Right there, pi over 4. The x coordinates, uh, cosine, the y coordinate sine. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, plus sine x, also root 2 over 2. What can you factor out from these two? Root 2 over 2. Cos x plus sine x. And we got verified. So more verification, more the same process, right? Like, hey, choose one side. Use the forms I'm giving you, right? Use the forms I'm giving you. Make sure the left side equals the right side. Um, yeah, and just apply it. That's all you're doing. But get a little creative sometimes. Like I got a little creative with example four, right? I broke apart those fractions because I can't. Like if I have three plus four over eleven, I get three eleven plus four eleven. Totally, you can do that. Um, and then use more of the identities you've learned or simplification. Like yeah, cosine a over cosine, cosine a, cosine b over cosine a, cosine b becomes one. Sine a, sine b over cosine a, cosine b becomes tan a, tan b. And then for example five, again I use this difference formula for cosine of x minus pi over four. When I applied it, then I saw an opportunity to evaluate cosine pi over four to root two over two factored it out so it isn't factoring also so going back to the first the, the previous set of notes again um yeah look for trigger things you already know break them down to sine cosine tangent sometimes multiply both near and denominator by something might help like factoring containing fractions look for that multiply the conjugate that was when you had radicals um okay now these here use some of the different forms to evaluate and let me be a little more clear about this uh provide An exact answer, meaning no decimals, no decimals at all. Because you could, if you want, <laughs> uh, let me go back here. Uh, let's see, my graphing calculator app I have right here, math departments. Yeah, I mean, like, for example, the first the first question we're going to work with is cosine of pi over 12. Cosine of pi. And I do have to switch over to, to radian mode, of course. So, yeah, it's going to give me a, a nasty number. But if you put that, I'm not going to give you full credit for a question like this because I need, I need you to use the formulas and be exact. We could check to see if we did it right by uh, plugging in where we get in our work into the calculator see if it matches cosine power 12 in the calculator. We do that. But here's the deal. Um, you're going to have to somehow use this, uh, probably a difference form makes the most sense. So cosine of A minus B, which I know is this. Hold on. Uh, let's see here. Cosine. Okay, 
cosine A times cosine B minus sine A sine B. Okay. Sorry, it's plus. My bad. It's a plus in the middle. My apologies. I should know that. What two angles when you subtract them can get you pi over 12? It's a little tricky. What do you guys think? Can I subtract these two? Will that work? Will that give me pi over 12? Yeah. I could also do 4 pi over 12 and 3 pi over 12. I could have done 9 pi over 12. But there's a lot, a lot of different ways I could have combined this. But why did I choose these two? Because what does 3 pi over 12 reduce to? Pi over 4. What's 2 pi over 12 reduced to? Are those two angles I could find in the inner circle? Yes. So the trick here, this is the trick. The key idea, find two angles on the inner circle that combine by either addition or subtraction. Get angle we are trying to evaluate. That's a key idea. Find two angles on the inner circle combined by additions. So I found it. But three parts well is not exactly in the inner circle. It's pi over four, but it's the same thing. It's just simplified, right? I mean, say pi over four. So now I'm going to do this. Which colors? Cosine of pi over four minus pi over six equals cosine of pi over four plus. What's cosine of pi over 4? Root 2 over 2. What's cosine of pi over 6? I think it's root 3 over 2. Root 2 over 2 and 1 half. So you should get root 6 plus root 2 over 4. Does that make sense what I just said? So what I did was I found two angles that can combine to this, right? These are the two that I figured out. By the way, you could have done four, five, twelve, three, pi over twelve, which means pi over three minus pi over four. You could have done that also. It still would have worked out the same final answer. But I found two angles that combine to this, but reduce them. Then I'm going to do it. Oh, wait, which part? Sorry, root six plus root two. Oh, that's pi over six. 2 pi over 12? Exactly, right, right. Because those two combine to pi over 12 and get the crown. And then when I reduce, when I reduce each of those, there are angles I can find in this circle. So that's what I did. I plugged them in for A, B, pi over 4, pi over 6. When I did cosine of pi over 4, I got root 2 over 2. When I did cosine of pi over 6, I got root 3 over 2. And then, of course, through the sine of them, I got root 3 over 2 over 1 half. Combining, I get root 6 over 4 and root 2 over 4. Keep combining, you get root 6 plus root 2 all over 4. Now, how do you know you did this right, right? Like you did this on a test or quiz. How do I know I'm doing this right? Well, turn on the calculator. Root six plus root two divided by four. And there you go. Point nine six five nine. Point nine six five nine. So. All right, let's look at this again. Seven power twelve. What, what what do you think we could add it together? I guess I'm part 12. Yeah, I did three and four. Yeah, that's, that's a good call. I like that. Let's do three and four. Because what's three pi over 12 reduced to? Pi over four. What's well, that reduced to? Pi over three. So I'm going to write like this tangent. That's true. That's totally a true statement. Totally true. Now remember, what does that mean? Go back to your formula sheet, your best friend. 
we have the point right here, right? Tangent of A plus B. You're going to do tangent of A plus tangent B, and then one minus tangent of A minus B. Tangent by a four plus tangent Well, that's one, that's root three, that's one, that's one, and that's root three. So you get one plus root three. And again, it's all unit circle steps. So clearly you'd have no unit circle for this part too. Um, go ahead and check in the calculator, see if you did it right. Let's check really quickly. Uh, tangent of 7 pi 5 by 12. And make sure in the right mode because that would suck. And then 1 plus root 3. Divide by 1 minus root 3. Yep, I got it. So that's how you can verify your work too. Any questions so far? We're okay. It's identities, evaluating, finding exact values, or combining things to get down to one angle and then evaluating afterwards. All this application of these formulas. That's all we're doing. Okay. I know, not terribly exciting stuff, but just good critical thing problems. Okay, we got a couple more. We're almost done. And then you guys can, and the homework will be, um, let's see here. Calculus, more files. Yeah, I'll be the next one in the uh, packet that I gave you guys. And I do have to um, upload the solution key for the previous one. Um, but yeah, and uh, this one, I think we'll just do one through. Oh boy. I'm going to hand select some. Uh, well, we'll see. Let's see. Because that's a lot. Um, anyway, I'll have an example here. Okay, so for both in the first quadrant, here's what you're gonna do. This is the strategy you wanna do for this one. So you're gonna draw two quick coordinate planes. This will be for angle A. This will be for angle B. So this would be 12 and 13, this would be 3 and 5. Now, if you do the Pythagorean theorem, you should get 5 and 4. Does that make sense, using Pythag, right? That makes sense, right? So. Okay, great. Now let's work this out. Sine of A plus B equals, remember the formula that's given to you, right? Sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Well, what's sine of angle A? Angle A is right here, right? What's the sine of, they, they told us, right? 12 thirteenths. What's cosine of angle B? So angle B is this one. What's the cosine of this triangle here? Four fifths, good, yeah. Four fifths, good. Yep. Yeah. And then just fill out the rest, right? Cosine A, that's going to be five thirteenths. Sine B, that's going to be three fifths. So 48 out of 65 plus 15 out of 65. 63 out of 65. 
Now, how do you know you did this right? Well, you could do this if you so desire. You could do this. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys did this. Uh, do you guys do inverse trig in the previous last semester? Like, do you guys ever use like the inverse sine function, like solving angles? No, no. Well, the inverse trig function allows you to solve. Like, if you want to solve for angle A, you do the inverse sine. And I'm going to actually switch to the degree mode so it's a little more tangible for me. So apparently angle A is about 67.3 degrees if you're a solve for it. So I'm going to store that as angle A. If I do that again for the other one, three-fifths, that's angle B. Apparently it's 36.87 degrees. Store that as angle B. So store, hit store, and just pick a letter. Hit alpha and store. Now if I do sine of alpha A plus alpha B, and I can show you guys this again later on. 0.969. Okay, that looks pretty good. 62 out of 65. Yeah, there we go. I know I did this right. So that's a way you could verify your work too. Um, but if we want an exact answer, 62 or 65, that's what we're looking for. Can't just give a decimal. So again, we want exact answers. No decimals. So we use a formula to, to achieve that, right? We use a formula to achieve that. Okay, one more problem, and then you guys can get to work. Okay, same thing here. Now, it's a little tricky. It's a little more challenging than the last one. What quadrant would that be in? If you're between pi or between pi, what quadrant is that in? Two, good, yeah. Thank you, John. Two. How about the other one? What's that one going to be in? Close, four. Because three pi or two is the negative y-axis, and then two pi does the full revolution. So I'm going to draw two triangles. This is for alpha, and it's for beta. Like we love using Greek alphabet. Okay. So for quadrant two, it's going to look kind of like this. For quadrant four, it's going to look like that. Okay, Toa, right? Toa. Opposites negative five. And the bot, well, actually, technically, it's going to be this five and negative 12. Technically, it's that because when you're pointing up, you're positive. When you're pointing left, you're negative, right? If you're pointing down, you're negative. Pointing right, you're positive. So for the next one, I'm going to say, and that's tangent, right? Now, cosecant is one of our sine. One of sine beta. So sine beta will be um, negative three over five. Could you flip it? So that's negative three and that's five. By the way, the hypotenuse, when you do this technique, very important. Always positive, guys. Don't make a negative. If you're using this technique, always make the hypotenuse positive. The legs could change. Depending on the negative negative Y, positive, you know, positive Y, whatever. Right? So this will be four if I do Pythagorean theorem, and this will be 13. Now let's work this out. So that's half the battle, by the way, getting all this straight. That's half the battle. The other half is actually then applying the formula. Cosine of alpha minus beta equals, now remember the formula is cosine alpha times cosine beta. Now it's plus, plus sine alpha times sine beta. What's cosine alpha? Um, it looks like that's going to be. What, what do you guys think? What's cosine alpha, guys? If you look at the first triangle, see the cosine of it. Yeah, but it's technically alpha of this. Technically, it's that, but you don't use a reference angle. What's cosine is going to be? 12 or 13? Yeah. 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 That's negative 12 or 13. Cosine beta will be 4 fifths. Sine alpha is 5 thirteenths. Sine beta is negative 3 fifths. Combine all, you should get negative 63 out of 65.
Okay. I think we're good there. Now, if you want to verify it, it's a little tricky to do because of the adjustment to the quadrant. And you guys haven't learned this yet about inverse trig. So I, actually, it might, it might confuse you guys, so I won't do it. Because you'd have to do the inverse trig function, but then you'd, the inverse trig function is default ranges in certain quadrants. You have to make an adjustment to put in the right quadrant. I won't verify it. Just, just have faith that you <laughs> that you do the triangles correctly, that you put the negatives where they're supposed to be, and use the formula correctly. So negative 6, 0, 6, 5. Okay, cool. Um, we got plenty of time to get some stuff done. So um, I'm going to ask you guys to work. Uh, so here's the homework. Um, I think the first page is fair. Um, actually, let me take it back. Just a lot to have you do all of it. One through five, eight through ten, eleven through twelve. And I just say fourteen. So skip. Number six to seven. I'll try to make an answer for this while you guys are working on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 